We've covered server and client components in Next.js. Now let's dive into the rendering lifecycle. In simpler terms, we will explore how they come to life on your screen. Understanding this process is not mandatory for building Next.js apps, but it's like knowing what happens in the kitchen before your food arrives at the table. Not necessary for enjoying your meal, but definitely interesting. When we talk about React server components, we're dealing with three key players, your browser, the client, and on the server side, we have Next.js, our framework, and React, our library. Let's break down the initial loading sequence step-by-step. Step. When your browser requests a page, the Next.js app router matches the requested URL to a server component. Next.js then instructs React to render that server component. React renders the server component and any child components that are also server components, converting them into a special JSON format known as the RSC payload. If you inspect the network tab when navigating to a route, you will come across this special JSON format, which is the RSC payload. During this process, if any server component suspends, React pauses rendering of that subtree and sends a placeholder value instead. While all this is happening, React is also preparing instructions for the client components we will need later. Next.js takes both the RSC payload and the client component instructions to generate HTML on the server. This HTML streams to your browser right away, giving you a quick non-interactive preview of the route. At the same time, Next.js also streams the RSC payload as React renders each piece of UI. Once this reaches the browser, Next.js processes everything that was streamed over. React uses the RSC payload and client component instructions to progressively render the UI. Once all the client components and the server components output has been loaded, the final UI state is presented to the user. Client components undergo hydration, transforming our application from a static display into an interactive experience. This is the initial loading sequence for RSCs. Now let's take a look at the update sequence for refreshing parts of the application. The browser requests a refetch of a specific UI, such as a full route. Next.js processes the request and matches it to the requested server component. Next.js instructs React to render the component tree. React renders the components similar to what happened during initial loading. But here's where it's different. We don't generate new HTML for updates. Instead, Next.js progressively streams the response data straight back to the client. On receiving the stream response, Next.js triggers a re-render of the route using the new content. React then carefully reconciles or merges the new rendered output with the existing components on the screen. Because we're using a special JSON format instead of HTML, React can update everything while keeping important UI states intact. Things like where you've clicked or what you've typed. This is the RSC update sequence. All right, now that we understand the React server components rendering lifecycle, Let's dive deeper into the topic. In Next.js, there are three different ways rendering can happen on the server. Static, dynamic, and streaming. Let's take a closer look at each of these next. Supporting the channel is free. Please like and subscribe, it helps a lot.